The Georgia Coastal Management Program is led by the Department of Natural Resources and the Coastal Resources Division. It is a federal state partnership. We work with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and we receive funding from them to implement our program here in Georgia. We operate under the National Coastal Zone Management Act, which was passed by Congress in 1972 amid all of the other sweeping environmental uh, reform that was happening at that time with the passage of the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act. So the Coastal Zone Management Act is part of that great suite of environmental changes. And what it did is it recognized not only the value of the nation's coast, but also the tremendous development pressure the coast were under at that time. And it provided an opportunity for states to engage and to develop plans for the protection, restoration, as well as balancing the development of coasts in their own states. So along about 1993-94, the head of the Federal Coastal Zone Management Program called me. And he said, Dwayne, he said, I know Georgia's not in the program. You're the last coastal state that's not in the program. He said, we do have money now for you to develop a coastal zone management plan if you are interested. So I said, well, here's the deal. You know, Georgia's a pretty strong state's right state. And if we're going to develop a program, you have to listen to us and you cannot dictate to Georgia what our program is going to look like. You know, we knew that there was probably a million dollars that had been left on the table by Georgia not participating in the program. So if we could get the federal government to agree to accept our existing laws and rules and regulations and develop our program based on those and those alone, then we could get the General Assembly to pass the authorizing legislation. And so that's when we applied for, received a grant, and started developing the program in 1994. The nice part about joining the program a bit later um, than many states is we had the opportunity to look at other programs in the country, see what worked for them, see how it um, matched up to the types of needs we had here in the Georgia coast. Um, we were able to develop a program that uh, really struck a, a great balance from the beginning, a uh, balance of uh, regulatory activities, outreach and education, but a strong focus on community assistance through providing technical assistance as well as coastal incentive grants. So we spent three years working with local governments, with 11 local county governments and municipalities to tell them what the program was going to be and what it was going to do for them. And so that's how we got the buy-in. We had really, really strong support when we had the bill introduced in the General Assembly. Had no problem getting it passed at all. And so in 1998, the bill passed and we became officially a part of the Federal Coastal Zone Management Program. The Georgia Coastal Management Program has proved an invaluable resource to large and small communities up and down Georgia's coast. It is a mechanism by which they can achieve goals, complete projects, and expand their communities in a way that supports the best sustainable life for folks who live, work, and play in those communities. The technical assistance that's afforded by the Coastal Management Program is unbelievable. Many times it is truly a lifeline for these communities to learn what they need to do, how they need to do it, what to do to improve. So the technical assistance component to the program really involved the hiring of staff who were specialized in working with coastal communities and their job really was to go out and get to know the people and the needs of the communities along the Georgia coast, to understand where they were and their ability to manage their natural resources as well as the development pressures that they had. And then our job was to identify what the gaps were and try to fill those needs, whether it was providing assistance in planning or simply coming to their meetings and commenting about natural resources. We reviewed ordinances for them. So what we discovered as time went on over the past 20 years, those communities that sort of were at the base level when we began this effort uh, really came up in their capacity and they no longer needed those basic services that we were able to provide. So what the program did was adapt. And as the years have progressed, one of what I think are the biggest and best changes for the Coastal Georgia Management Program would be having the staff be specialized so that multiple staff members assist a county, but they're specializing in a certain subject or a topic matter. So the technical assistance as it looks now 
is really focused on those greater needs. So coastal hazards and planning for that and how to adapt and respond and quality growth issues and how to take our stormwater management to the next level. But also are things that our government agencies are doing. So we're collaborating with the different state agencies, with federal agencies, with partners who are working on restoration projects. We now have the greater capacity to provide more assistance to those types of things. The second accomplishment I think that is so important of the Georgia Coastal Management Program is the offering of the Coastal Incentive Grant Program. This is a vehicle and an impetus for change in many of these communities that allows them to to have projects completed that otherwise would not be able to be funded and to make the strongest and best communities for their constituents as possible. So the Coastal Incentive Grant Program uh, really is an opportunity to provide seed money for whether it be a small scale research at the local universities, state universities, or whether it's a small scale construction project if a community identified the need for additional public access to a river or a wetland or a natural area. The Coastal Incentive Grant Program was set up to fund those types of projects. We engaged local citizens and marine researchers and folks like that in trying to help us develop you know, the plan, the annual plans as to how to distribute the money to local governments. In other words, we would have a theme basically, water quality. And so a local government, if they had a project that was related to water quality, could apply for a grant, a coastal incentive grant. So using you know, local citizens to help develop themes like that has been a great, great tool. You have small communities that need such basic grants approved, such as looking at stormwater runoff. That's a basic community need and concern but one that's not often addressed if the technical knowledge and the funding isn't there. We have grants that have funded nature trails, they have funded sustainability programs in projects and programs to help communities get ready to regroup after a natural disaster. We were engaged with the Georgia Farm Bureau community because we felt like we could provide some money to local governments to help the local farmers and we did. Money was given to local governments for access to build fishing piers and boat ramps so it's it's been a great program. It's been as good for local governments as it's been for anybody. So over the past 20 years there have been well over 350 projects supported through that and as you go through the communities you can see where that grant program has touched that community whether it's something like a public access, a nature trail, or a boardwalk, maybe an outdoor classroom. But if you go into the communities and start talking to them, you realize that some of the plans that they're referencing are things that the Coastal Incentive Grant has supported, and you can see how that program has touched the efforts that's going on there. And when my organization joined with Glen County and submitted a Coastal Incentive Grant, which was called the Coastal Georgia Litter Prevention Program, I was able to experience firsthand the wonderful technical assistance from the staff to help me understand how to craft the grant. And I was able to see what a wonderful thing that a Coastal Incentive Grant can be for a community. And one of the best parts of this whole experience was having the grant deliverables that needed to be accomplished. The bureaucratic system can run slowly, and with these deliverables, we were able to accomplish all of our goals. And Glen County is so supportive of this effort that they have budgeted for a new code enforcement officer that deals specifically with litter, and they purchased a brand new vehicle. So not only do the grants accomplish goals, but they also leave a ripple effect of, of additional positive impacts within the communities that they serve. Outreach and education is an important component of the Coastal Management Program, and one of the hallmarks of that is Coast Fest. Coast Fest is Georgia's largest outdoor annual festival celebrating the coast and its natural resources. And over the years, over 120,000 children and adults alike have come through our gates here to learn about the value of the natural resources that we have here, what different types of programs and activities they can engage in to learn more about the coast and to learn more about what the agencies are doing. So it's an amazing opportunity to share what we know about the coast with folks that live around here and get to experience it, but maybe don't have the opportunity to learn about it every day.
Going forward with the Georgia Coastal Management Program, one of the things I think most important is to remember that there is a constant need to show up and be present in the coastal communities with technical assistance and information about the funding mechanism. And just keeping in mind that there is a turnover in these coastal communities and that we can never beat the drum too many times and spread the message too often. 20 years ago when this program started, the hope was that the staff of the Coastal Mentor Program could engage coastal communities and change how they viewed their coasts and how they valued their coast and how they might be able to take some ownership and stewardship of that. So for the next 20 years, I hope that we continue to have the support that we've had up to this point, both from the federal and the state level. I hope that we can continue to dig deeper and get into the harder issues and um, do better in solving problems and really continue working towards you know, bettering the coastal communities. We can see the start. We can see what the 20 years has done. So I can't wait to see what 40 years can do. Thank you.